The film begins in Hong Kong, with Andrew Lau on a footbridge saying goodbye to his wife and daughter, who's leaving him. As they leave, an electric power suddenly starts to show up. It begins running through his veins, which causes the people in the area to become highly alarmed. On the other hand, his daughter and wife have left the footbridge. From below, they see him as he turns blue and eventually explodes, which sets fire to the surrounding area. Later, the narrator says that after many years of faithful service, the machines eventually asked for freedom and independence. Still, they refused, and as a result, they had to bear the consequences of their decision. After that, the news worldwide talks about different attacks, such as attacks throughout the Middle East and other parts of the world. Then, at long last, the machines achieved peace and established a new desert homeland, which the humans refer to as the Seam, a heavily militarized zone. Back to the explosion, the news says that they had identified the bomber, who, up until a few moments before the explosion, was unaware that he was a machine sleeper. On the other hand, Yousef, with her wife Ayana, comes across the news telecast showing Andrew looking disturbing before exploding. Later, the authorities determined 86 fatalities and hundreds more injured due to the catastrophe. Therefore, they request that the general public report anyone displaying indicators of being a machine sleeper. After some time, Ayana informs Yusef of the information. She voices her fear over the possibility that it will affect her. On the other hand, he's adamant that this won't occur if they continue their journey, as no one will even be aware that they were there. During this time, the soldiers inform units 53 and 54 that a machine sleeper is likely in the vicinity. Ayana is still concerned that they will be able to find them, or even worse, so she reveals to Yusuf that she can't guarantee his safety while he's with her. Yusuf continues to be adamant that they will be successful and eventually successfully persuades her of this. After that, they start to catch up to each other and run together. A few moments later, the soldiers get a tip that they're looking for an Arab woman with black hair, brown eyes, and a height of 5'2", last seen at the Al Rada checkpoint. After that, the commander gives the command to deploy drones and conduct the search in a grid pattern. After a brief period, the drones begin their patrol and investigate the surrounding environment. After searching for a short period, they finally locate Yusuf and Ayana in a crowded alley. On the other hand, Yusef advises Ayana to maintain her composure in the face of the drones. When the soldier sees Ayana through the drones, she remarks that it's a possibility that she's their target. While this is going on, Ayana and Yusef start to feel anxious, so they try to hide by going into narrower alleys, which causes the troops to lose sight of them. On the other side, the soldiers start looking at the area. When Ayana starts to panic, the machine inside her begins to operate, which presses a woman cleaning the street to notice her and alert the nearby soldiers about her presence. Then, Yusef and Ayana come dangerously close to colliding with multiple soldiers, but manage to evade them. The soldiers promptly chase the fleeing suspects and radio for reinforcements. Still, when they're about to proceed down the west, Yusef is waiting there and aggressively attacks the two. Ayana tries to kill one of the soldiers by choking him as Yusef is fighting against them. However, after the guy dies, she realizes she has burned his neck instead. Later on, drones begin to approach Ayana and obtain a visual of her exhibiting indications consistent with that of a machine sleeper. The commander then says she's active and starting to break down. And then, the drone tells her not to resist because she's a danger to herself and others and that they can help her. Unfortunately, Yusef picks up the dead soldier's rifle and locks it to the drone, knocking it down before it manages to leave. With one fatality, they then confirm that the subject is a suicide sleeper. Afterward, Yusef talks to her and tries to touch her but is grounded. He then tries to calm her but she says that she can't control it yet he still tells her to think of something good. Like when they first met when she was arguing with a vendor and he tried to help, but she ended up yelling at it. He reminds her that she told him she could fight her battles. Minutes later, Ayana calmed herself and then they saw the soldier's radio, so they grabbed it and left immediately. Ayana tells Yusef she needs to get to the border, so they must find a way to get there. When Yusef and Ayana notice that there are soldiers in every direction, she begins to formulate a plan for evading them. However, Yusef suggests she run away while he takes care of the soldiers by distracting them. She immediately disagrees with him, claiming that she won't leave him. Yet, when he asks for another option, they can't think of anything else, so they're left with no choice but to do it. After some time has passed, 
Yusef rides out on a motorcycle in an attempt to distract the soldiers while Ayana makes her way away. When the soldiers finally manage to surround him, the commander orders them to stop him but instructs them not to fire on him because it's a crowded neighborhood. However, when the soldiers have succeeded in encircling him, he escapes down a narrow alleyway. On the other side, Ayana runs while following the direction the machine and her provides her. While all is going on, Yusef successfully evades the soldiers and drones tracking him. Sometime later, Ayana manages to get through the wall in the demilitarized zone. Unfortunately, the towers don't have permission to engage because it's too risky this close to the border. When the aerial units had permission to cross into the Denzi to pursue Ayana, they immediately left. The commander then orders them to try and stop her, but they shouldn't cross the borderline. Which one of the soldiers is confident she won't? In the meantime, Yusef also goes to follow Ayana. Suddenly, a large machine shows from the ground while Ayana runs in the desert. On the other hand, the commander commands them to abort because they're too late. However, one of the soldiers insists on continuing as she's already in their sights. Even though the commander keeps ordering them to fall back because she's too close to the border, the soldiers say they can still make it and she won't cross the line. However, the commander has ordered them to retreat because crossing that line is a blatant violation of the machine treaty and he does not want them to get in trouble. But then, the soldiers draw their weapons as they're already close to Ayana. Still, even if the commander tells them not to fire on the suspect, they start to fire. Then, as they retreat, the giant machine fires at one of the drones, setting it on fire. The other soldier then says he can't leave his wingman, so he asks permission to fire back. Still, the commander commands him not to engage and leave immediately. Later, the giant machine fires at a border, causing their defense systems to come online. They then notice multiple signals appearing, and the commander says they will start another war if they don't back off. So the commander tries to speak with the large machine to disengage, or they will fire on them. But when the device doesn't respond, he orders the soldiers to take him out. After the firefight, Yusef, still riding his motorcycle, goes to Ayana, lying on the floor. Ayana then tells him to stay back, but he keeps conversing that they're safe and that she made it there. However, Ayana, who's severely injured, loses hope that she'll live. But Yusef stops her by reminiscing their old memories and their dreams. Still, she says she feels she won't live long enough. Then, Yusef tells her not to give up because she has already gone so far to die. Yet, she tells him that he has to go on without her because all of this can be for nothing and then she asks him to get back. Then, Yusef moves back and Ayana tells him she's scared. Moments after, she tells him she loves him and when he replies that he loves her too, she slowly explodes in front of the giant machine. The film ends with Yusef crying in pain, looking at the giant machine and slowly walking away.